Hi everybody and welcome to Josiah is Right. So a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, actually not super far from where I am, probably just up in probably LA, London, depending on where you consider things, San Francisco, George Lucas made space all dirty. He made it crazy dirty. Things were broken and that is the highest praise I can give Star Wars. It was super real. That's what makes it hold up today. It's still very real. Even the coolest ship in all of science fiction is referred to by the hero as junk. What a piece of junk! And a piece of junk it was, though it did come through in times of need. Science fiction and film and television had long been polished and clean. There were exceptions, but the reality of that dirtiness wasn't at the center of it. Silent Running, for example, was dirty more due to the circumstances of how they had to film it. It looked dirty because they couldn't afford to make it look not dirty. It was filmed in a dirty old ship. With Star Wars, they put the money into the grit and grime, which opened the doors for films like Blade Runner and Alien, which, not so coincidentally, were both made by Ridley Scott. Unlike Star Wars, those films were not just dirty, but desperate. Science fiction writing, however, has been cake with dirt since the very beginning. Just look at H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. It is an absolutely filthy, grimy place. To start, look at the cover. It's smoky, everything's on fire, and this is just one of many covers. They're kind of all like this. They show you the destruction, they show you the dirt, they show you the grittiness. At the bottom of the hill, I turned my head to look at the hillside I was leaving. Thick streamers of black smoke shot with threads of red fire were driving up into the still air and throwing dark shadows upon the green treetops eastward. The smoke already extended far away to the east and west, to the Byfleet Pine Woods eastward, and to walking on the west. The road was dotted with people running towards us, and very faint now, but very distinct through the hot air, quiet air. One heard the war of a machine gun that, that was presently stilled, and an intermittent cracking of rifles. Apparently the Martians were setting fire to everything within range of their heat ray. And while Ray Bradbury never focused on the filth, his world were filled with burning books and dying planets and all the smells that come with it. The rockets came like locusts, swarming and settling in blooms of rosy smoke. And from the rockets, men came with hammers in their hands to beat the strange world into a shape that was familiar to the eye, to bludgeon away all the strangeness. Their mouths fringed with nails so they resembled steel-toothed carnivores, spitting them into their swift hands as they hammered up framed cottages and scuttled over roofs with shingles to blot out the eerie stars and fit green shades to pull against the night. Philip K. Dick, whose Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, I used to always think it was electric sleep when I was a kid, became Blade Runner. His work was known for the gritty, smoke-filled noir worlds that his characters occupied. The legacy of World War Terminus had diminished in potency. Those who could not survive the dust had passed into oblivion years ago, and the dust, weaker now, in confronting the strong survivors, only deranged minds and genetic priorities. Despite his lead codpiece, the dust, undoubtedly, filtered in and at him, brought him daily, so long as he failed to emigrate, its little load of befouling filth. Broken worlds filled with broken people. Heck, it was set after World War Terminus, and most of the Pacific Northwest was a fallout zone. But the real literary dirt maker was Frederick Pohl's 1977 novel, Gateway. Note the year, 1977, the late 70s into the early 80s were a really big turning point for science fiction, getting into the real dirty, gritty nature, particularly in film. There were two lovely choices. One of them at giving up every chance of a decent life forever, and the other one scared me out of my mind. That tells you a great deal about the nature of the world of Gateway and the tone of the story. With Bradbury's writing and the amazing planets on Star Wars, I wanted to go there. I wanted to live in that world. With Gateway, I had no desire to do that. I didn't want to visit. Sure, you had a hollowed out asteroid that was hollowed out by an alien race. I really want to check that out. However, when you realize what Gateway is like, I am staying here on Earth. However, Gateway is a desperately sad, truly dirty, and utterly dangerous place. Taking a look at the cover for Gateway, it's not as gritty as that H.G. Wells cover, but it's very real. You can see the verisimilitude of this world. The dirtiness is there. The story is told through various ways, not unlike Dracula sort of using reports, specifically casualty reports, to update you on how many have died at Gateway, things like that. It mainly alternates between a narrative in the present tense on Gateway and in the future, or present, on Earth, as Robinette talks to his therapist, a robot or a computer or something that he absolutely hates. So on Earth, he's living a life of luxury because he had success on Gateway. On Earth, Robinette mines shale, a job that Mike Rowe would be proud of. It would be featured on Dirty Jobs of the Future, if Dirty Jobs is a show in whatever future Gateway set. So Robinette wins a lottery. He uses that lottery money to buy a ticket to Gateway. 
basically all the money he has gets him there and he has some money to live on. So what is Gateway? Gateway is a hollowed out asteroid full of these old alien ships that were left by the Hechi. This alien race that we don't know anything about. We don't know much about them. We don't know how they worked. We don't really know how to pilot these ships. Physiologically, these aliens are different than us. So it's really a challenge because we then physiologically are different. Plus we don't understand the technology. So people haven't exactly figured out how it works. So half the time you go out, you don't come back. You'll go through a gateway to another world, another planet. You might burn up in a sun or you might land in a place that gets you rich. Robinette delays going out and only eventually goes because he's running out of money. And he's totally desperate at this point. He needs a score. Offsetting the risk is the potential reward, which is great. You can become stupidly rich with what you find. Robinette meets Clara and they sort of settle for each other slash fall in love. Just like everything else on Gateway, it's caked in dirt. When you spend weeks on end close to another person, so close that you know every hiccup, every smell, and every scratch on the skin, you either come out of it hating each other or so deep in each other's gut that you can't find a way out. Clara and I were both. Our little love affair turned into a Siamese twin relationship. There wasn't any romance in it. There wasn't room enough between us for romance to occur. And yet I knew every inch of Clara, every pore and every thought, far better than I'd know my own mother. And in the same way, from the womb out, I was surrounded by Clara. On every single mission, the characters were more likely to die out there than to survive. And I won't spoil the ending for you, but it's as dirty, it's as gritty, it's as sad, it's as real as everything else in Gateway. Gateway came at a time when science fiction was changing. It was growing up a bit, it was getting a lot darker, a lot more real. Ships were dirt covered and cloaked in reality. Gateway had none of the romance of those places, none of the romance of Star Wars, none of the romance of Ray Bradbury's work. It isn't my favorite science fiction novel, but it's perhaps among the most important, and certainly the one I respect the most. If you haven't read Gateway, it's currently being developed by the Sci-Fi Channel, so be sure to check it out. If they do it right, it'll be real, it'll be hard, and it'll be awesome. So, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think of Gateway and Dirty Sci-Fi, if that's a phrase. What do you think of literary fiction and films that become realistic in their science fiction. I actually just watched Blade Runner 2049 recently. And again, that very real, bleak view of the world, but there's a little bit of hope, right? There wasn't much in Gateway. Probably none. Thanks for watching.